So this week, our lecture focuses on virtualization technology. Now, what is virtualization? You probably have heard the term. It's the ability to run multiple operating systems or applications or services on a single physical system and share the underlying hardware resources. So for instance, we use it a lot in our computer classes because uh, let's say you got a Windows machine at home and I'm teaching you Linux. I don't want you to have to wipe your whole computer clean and install Linux or have an actual physical computer you install it on. So we use a program called VMware Workstation where it's a software program and you install the operating system inside that software program. That software program for VMware Workstation and using Linux or any other operating system thinks it's a physical computer. It actually uses the resources like your RAM, your hard drive and things like that, but it isn't actually uh, a physical computer. So that software is just a collection of computer programs or related data that actually tells the computer what to do. And the hardware is just your physical components. But with virtualization, we put everything in the software and sparingly use the hardware. <clears throat> so there's different types of virtualization we'll talk about today. Hardware, desktop, software, memory, storage, data, and network. So a traditional virtualization is just like I was talking about. So traditionally, if you wanted to install Windows on a computer, you would install it on, let's say, your laptop, your desktop. And if you wanted another operating system like Linux, you need to go find another computer, another physical machine. Um, that's why when you see data centers, you got all those different servers on servers on servers, right? But today, you can actually do like the picture on the right, where you can have a laptop or a server, and you can have some type of virtualization layer. So that's like VMware Workstation or a program. Virtual Box is one made by Oracle. And then you see here, each one of those little layers, it says App OS, App OS, App OS. Those can be separate actual operating systems installed within VMware Workstation, VirtualBox or whatever it is. So you can have a Windows 10 computer there, a Windows 2019 server, a Linux machine, and they're all ones you can click back and forth between, but they're not actually the physical computer. Your physical computer can still be a Windows 10 machine or whatever it is, but each one of those little app and OS boxes there thinks it's its own separate real living breathing computer somewhere, but it actually isn't. It's contained within itself in that software program. <laughs> So this is kind of an example of that. You just have all these different machines that you can have, um, again, virtualized. The good thing is that because this is all software, everything is really just in a folder. So if you like back up that folder and then if that server decides to stop wanting to work one day, you can just copy and paste that folder and start it back up and it'll work like it's new. You don't have to go through the process of wiping drives and waiting for it to install. It's all software based. So again, this is kind of another example here of how it's contained within itself. There is nothing here um, that can get outside of, let's say, that green box there or that pink box there. They are separate. Uh, they, they think they're a separate computer, but it's really contained within a software program. Now, each one of these does, though, use some of the physical memory, like your RAM and hard drive space, doesn't use it as much as it would if it was its own set of standalone computer. So you do have to kind of make sure, though, that the computer that's going to host all this stuff, the physical machine that's going to host all these virtual machines is actually pretty, as in my terms, beefed up. Right. So it's got a lot of RAM, a lot of hard drive space and some good computing power because if you start each one of these at the same time they're actually draining your physical computer all simultaneously hardware virtualization so this is a creation of virtual machines that act like a real computer which we were just talking about it's probably the most common hardware options are customizable so you can give one virtual machine two gigs of ram one virtual machine 10 gigs of ram if you want to or whatever it is these are some of the hardware virtualization programs. So we use a lot VMware Workstation, Oracle VirtualBox, um, you know, all of these uh, vSphere over there to the right that actually allow you to virtualize your computers. And we use it kind of like a sandbox environment when teaching students operating systems so that you don't have to, you know, go get a new computer just to learn how to use Linux or Windows or whatever it is. And this is kind of an example of this is a Windows 10 virtual machine. Once you install it, you've got the operating system file there at the top, the one that says ISO in the little folder. 
Everything else, once you install it in the virtual machine, is just a bunch of uh, software files. So if you actually click on, was it one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, the ninth one down, it looks like three little transparent windows. If you double click on that, that will start that virtual machine up and it thinks it's a real computer. Sorry, this is a picture of VirtualBox. This is actually what each one of them looks like. So you can kind of click through them and play them uh, or you can turn them off just like a real computer. And you see there, it shows you what the operating system is, how much memory it has and everything. So it's like Ubuntu, CentOS, Oracle, <clears throat> Linux, this is one that shows like Windows Server, all types of ones that are running. This is one showing you uh, VMware Fusion. So just like VMware Workstation, you can do this on a Mac. VMware Fusion will allow you to run these virtual machines on a Mac. Now types of hardware vir virtualization, you got full, partial, and para. Um, this would be kind of an example of full where you've got the full computer itself virtualized and is sharing all of those resources. Uh, successful sharing the computer system with multiple users, isolating users, emulating hardware to achieve reliability, reduce hardware needs. So this is kind of that dummy terminal again uh, where you might have like a server sitting in the corner and you might have like a, a computer that's not very expensive more so is just presenting you with information or apps. Uh, the challenges are some privilege instructions need to pierce the virtualization machine uh, to actually interact on a, a um, administrator level. Partial virtualization is some, but not all the hardware is simulated. So operating system is usually able to access resources outside of the virtual machine. Software applications still run within the virtual machine. Some challenges there are more hardware resources are needed uh, and it's less secure because, again, it's not a full sandbox. It could actually get outside of that environment. Para virtualization, it doesn't actually simulate the hardware, but instead it offers a special application programming interface. Um, it's usually good for better compatibility, but it's the hardest form to implement because it, it requires somebody to know a lot of coding. Desktop and virtual virtualization, like we said, uh, is a concept that create that separates a personal computer desktop environment from a physical machine using a client server model. Uh, again, you've got all these memory and resources that are installed to the server, and then a software program regulates the client or the guest connecting to it. Citrix Systems is one that pushes out apps like Microsoft Word. Outlook, Excel, Internet Explorer to your desktop. So you're just more so having some type of thin client is what they call it. Something that doesn't have a lot of capability as far as computing power, but all it does is contact the server somewhere and you can see it says Citrix Receiver. So you're receiving access to all these apps that may be like a workstation if you're in an assembly line or something like that. Software virtualization uh, it basically allows you to virtualize the apps, uh, allows on the fly activation and deactivation or resetting, uh, removes the files cleanly without altering your Windows installation and semantic workplace virtualization or workspace virtualization is a program that does that. <sighs> And it just kind of shows you how you've got that virtualization agent and then you can put whatever applications up there you want to and push it out to your end users, allow certain users to click on some and disallow them to click on others. Memory virtualization, it divides your volatile RAM. Uh, again, your ability to, it's kind of like the... Um, like the gas in your car. It's allowing it to fuel your computing power. Um, and it basically virtualizes it to a lot of different resources. So you kind of like centralize it and then push it out as needed to different places, <laughs> depending on what application needs some memory. Storage virtualization. Now, there's a lot of different like network based storage and cloud based storage, but you're basically pooling your, your resources together. <clears throat> Google uses it a lot um, and you can kind of virtualize your storage that way. Uh, network based storage. Again, you've got like storage area networks, uh, cloud based storage through Google or Dropbox. Um, a lot of home routers now have USB ports where you can actually create a storage area network at home. Uh, and once you plug that USB drive or portable hard drive into your router, it's accessible through anybody on your network. and You don't have to like carry around a flash drive everywhere. 
So again, those are just some examples of network-based storage virtualization. It comes in many forms and it really depends on what job you've got. It's really helped us in education, but you can kind of think about in terms of how it may help you um, in your uh, personal or work life, or you may already use it at your job.